Hey everybody, Ryan McCaffrey with IGN. I am joined by a uh, video game design legend, a man who should need no introduction, but I'll give him a quick one anyway. His name is Ron Gilbert. He is the creator of Monkey Island, Maniac Mansion, many of the greatest point-and-click adventure games of all time. And as you can see on the screen, uh, he has a new one that I am very curious to be seeing for the first time. Very excited about this. Ron, thanks for showing this to me. Yeah, hey, thanks for, uh, f thanks for watching. So uh, the game is Thimbleweed Park. It was a successful Kickstarter, and here we are. You, uh, you've, it, is, it is as if we are in 1987. So give me the, the quick rundown on uh, the, the Cliff's Notes version elevator pitch of the, the game itself, as well as why it looks like we're in 1987 graphically, and uh, where, where are we in the game here? Uh, okay, where we are, Thimbleweed Park is, it's basically a story of these two detectives who have shown up in this uh, small town because of the murder of a body right yes. here, the corpse. And so what they're trying to do is they're investigating this crime, trying to figure out, you know, who, who killed this person. So you as the player, you take on the role, you know, of these two uh, agents, these two detectives who are trying to figure out the murder and we're kind of joining the game right after the opening i've skipped over the whole opening uh, for spoiler reasons Fair enough. but you know we are kind of right at the beginning of the game right awesome. now how the, how the game would start and the first thing that the you know players will will be able to do so i guess we would want to probably start by uh looking at the corpse yeah that's a good thing so one, one thing is we've got these two characters so we can just click and they walk we can also switch between the characters you know and uh Oh, nice. And do things like that. So you do have to play the game switching between the two characters. So we'll go um, we'll go back to Agent Ray, and uh, let's go ahead and look at the corpse. And uh, Agent Ray is uh, taking notes as she does this uh, out of his notebook, and we can look at the corpse a little bit more. <laughs> He's left-handed. And uh, one of the things we need to do is we need to take a photograph of the corpse. If we try to leave this area, uh, the agents will say they really need to take a photograph of the corpse. So that's one of the things we need to do. Luckily, we do have a camera, so we can just use the camera on the corpse. Uh, but there ah. doesn't, doesn't seem to be any film on the camera. But uh, when we were looking over here at Agent Reyes, he did have some film in his camera. So what we can do is we can just give uh, this film to Ray, and he'll go over and uh, hand the film to her. So now she, switching back to her, she's got the film. So we'll use the film in the camera. And now we have a camera with film. Oh, right. So let's go ahead and use the camera on the corpse. And she will go over and <laughs> she will take a picture of it. And so now we have a photo of the body. Which we now, have done. Ron, is uh, is the Polaroid camera an indication of of the time period that the game is set in, or is it just a, just a modern modern usage for for laughs here? Yeah, no, it it is. I mean, the game is set in 1987, and you know we're doing a lot of things, you know, in the game, you know, poking fun at the time period and also trying to be somewhat authentic to the time period. And you know, in 1987, there were no digital cameras, so right. if you wanted a camera that produced a photograph that you didn't, you know, mail off to a photo lab it, it was a polaroid camera that you would use so and 1987 you know. of course that is uh, that is our graphic that's your graphical style here as well uh, yeah i mean 1987 yeah 1987 was when maniac mansion was released so that's kind of you know why we picked that year plus you know there's the kind of 8-bit uh, graphics which i i mean i really love you know 8-bit stuff and yeah. so you know being able to do a game that was kind of you know felt that was uh you know in that style was something we wanted to do so anyway, we have the we have the picture now. So let's uh, let's, let's kind of head out of here, and I'll go ahead and open up the gate, and uh, we'll head up the side of the road, and now we're alongside the highway. There's a can and, on the side of the highway there. Yeah, we'll go ahead and pick that up. That. We'll uh, look at that can. It's an empty can of Crockford's tuna heads. <laughs> Now, one of the one of the things you could do in our Kickstarter campaign was if you donated a certain amount, you could create an object in the game and name it. And that is actually one of those objects. The nice. uh, it's, uh, D Doug Crockford had had named that <laughs> object, so that is in the game. So let's uh, head on down. There's something is else that a here. Remote control there. What is that? Oh, oh an Atari, Atari cartridge. Atari cartridge. Oh, that's that's exciting. 
Oh, it's Ball Blaster from <laughs> Mucus Flap Games. <laughs> yeah, we love poking fun of stuff, so... Movie so humor, there, right? which is, of course, a, a signature of yours over the years, is clearly is the same type of, of uh, you know, cheeky comedic bent to, to Thimbleweed Park as it's been for many of your games. Yeah, I think you'll find the same, you know, type of humor that was in Maniac Mansion and Monkey Island, you know, is, is in this game. There's a lot of, you know, satire and a lot of, uh, you know, making fun of things and, and strange stuff going on. So anyway, we were passed earlier by this van who, um, uh, there's a big crash sound. And so let's go see what happened to the van. Looks like the van has run into some water. And, uh, You've got a wrench we, now. You can shut the fire hydrant. Yeah, we, can, we can't get by the water. Uh, it seems to be blocking our way. So, uh, yeah, we have a wrench. So let's go ahead and use the wrench uh, on the fire hydrant. She seems to be having some trouble doing this. <laughs> Can't seem to get the wrench to work. It's a very sophisticated wrench. It has <laughs> blinking lights and stuff. So obviously, uh, anyway, strange van. Uh, let's see if we can open up the van. Let's see what's in there. No, not not getting anything out of the van. So let's uh, let's head back this way. We got the water block in our way. Okay. Strange van. So I'll just uh, keep on walking a little bit farther. And then uh, I can hear the there was a the van door open and closed. So let's go back. Maybe somebody would come out of the van. Okay. And there's that sign or something on the ground. Yeah. There oh, well. okay. Interesting. <laughs> it's a little bit odd. So now we get these dialogues. And Good these, old dialogue choices. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I love those in Monkey Island. I think we first did dialogues at Lucasfilm in the Indiana Jones game, and you know, I think they were kind of perfected in the in Monkey Island games, and I really like those. So we're definitely doing a lot of dialogues in this game. So these are some of the things that you can you can ask. Uh, let's let's ask this. Seems really odd. Should I save my game? <laughs> It's an important thing to know, you know, especially when you're, you know, playing a classic adventure game. Should, should, well, you, should, on that, should you save your game or not? <laughs> on that note, actually, Ron, is this? Uh, can we expect Thimbleweed Park to sort of follow the your your past uh, design decisions in the sense of uh, you can't fail, you can't die and, and ruin your game, no matter what your choices you make. Yeah, that's that 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 is true. There, there's nothing you can do in the game that will cause you to screw up. I mean, you could, in theory, play the game from beginning to end and never save the game. You know, right. as long as you don't get tired and I suppose have the bladder for it. <laughs> um, but you can, uh, but you can. Um, yeah, there are no dead ends. I mean, Maniac Mansion was filled with dead ends. You know, and screwy stuff you could do, which, you know, I, I attribute to just us being naive more than anything. Mm. Um, but yeah, we've kind of gotten rid of those. So this file it follows the game design principles, you know, that were applied to um, Monkey Island, which is there. There really is no way to screw yourself out of that stuff. So I'll keep asking about these weird signals that they're talking about. Is Thimbleweed Park an idea that you've had kicking around in your head for a while, Ron, or was this was this more of just a more of the way uh, with where Tim Schafer with with what turned out to be Broken Age, where he thought I'd like to make an adventure game again, and then the idea came came uh, later. Yeah, the the idea definitely came afterwards. You know, G Gary Winnick and I were you know talking about adventure games and kind of the charm of the old point and click games and how that seems to have been lost in a lot of modern adventure games, and yeah. and that really got the idea of going together. Should we, um, you know, should we? Uh, you know, try to build something that really was like those classic games that it had the same, you know, retro art and it had the same, you know, verb interface and all of those things. So it wasn't it wasn't a modernized take on a game, but it was something that was, you know, really called back to that stuff. So uh, we're done talking to them. Um, we can't get it to work, so I'm just going to give the wrench uh, to them try. Uh, one of the pigeons and see if they can go ahead and fix this for us. So yeah, to answer your question, I mean this this was an idea that that we came up with after we had decided to do the game. It's you know it's not an idea that you know uh, we've been sitting on for a while. All right, so we got our water fix. So let's uh, Move let's along. head on down the road. There's some more junk along the <laughs> road. And uh, well, there goes the van. I guess they got everything fixed. 
and I'm sure we will see them again. There's a bottle. Will. Let's go ahead and pick that up. Because you know, you're at, in adventure games, you gotta pretty much pick everything up. I'm so, gonna I'm gonna assume, even though we know what assuming does, that that uh, Lucas slash Disney technically owns Scum. Is this engine? Did you sort of rebuild it brick by brick as of sorts, or? Yeah, I did. I, I I really rebuilt rebuilt the whole thing because yeah, I mean Dis, Disney does own Scum, and I think I mean Scum couldn't really do this anyway. You yeah. know, I mean there's there's stuff you can see like the parallaxing that's going on in the background, you know, right. the sky and all that kind of stuff. Scum really could not, you know, could not have done that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, while it is kind of a retro game with retro graphics, we are really taking advantage of. You know, I think what you know, modern day hardware has has to offer. Just I mean, things like the vertical scrolling. Ways. Yeah, the, the vertical scrolling that happened right there. I mean, the Scum system yeah. didn't really do that kind of huh. stuff. So, you know, it's 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 small things, but um, it's good. So I'm going to head on into the sheriff's office, and uh, one of the things that uh, you know, if we had explored around, we would have found is this little thing of microfilm. Mm. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up that microfilm and add it uh, to my inventory and uh, head out. Now I'm going to go down to the coroner's office. Now I did skip the intro to the game and there are some things that would have been explained in the intro. Okay. One of the things that would have been explained, you know, are these 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 <laughs> kind of computers here uh, which will help us in investigating our, our crime and one of them is the Facetron which if you stick a picture in it into it and you stick some kind of official record it will match up those pictures together and you know let you know who the person was okay. so you know we can uh, let's put the microfilm inside the face tron and we took that lovely picture so let's go ahead and use that picture in the face tron and then it'll do a little bit it's of working. thinking And it looks like we've got a couple of bells, and then out pops a, an identity report. So we can go ahead and pick up the identity report. So we've kind of solved one of the you know trio of puzzles that we're going to need to solve by you know getting a photograph of the body and finding the microfilm and putting it in. We we have a report. So that's kind of uh, the way that that works with solving the crime. Oh, there's the uh, coroner. <laughs> Looking a little strange. Lurking creepily in the yeah, background he's, there. Yeah, he's 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 gone now. He's yeah, he's the corner's really creepy. Um, I think we want to stay away from him definitely. So we just kind of you know head into town a little bit farther down the road. Just kind of show you a little bit of uh, what we got. We can head off onto these streets. Plenty and to you see the town is any of, of your games. Excuse me, say it again. Uh, plenty to explore, as in any of the Yeah, games. no, there is. There, there, there is a lot to explore. I mean, the town's very run down. It's kind of a little bit of the backstory of the town is that uh, it's, you know, it's it's seen its heyday. You know, but back, uh, you know, back, you know, ten or twenty years ago, it was kind of the thriving metropolis, and it's really kind of shut down. There's even Willie, the town bum, uh, sitting over here. So we can go through, we can go into the post office. And there's a little guy filing some mail. Or we can, uh, let's head over to the local newspaper. And now, could you have done all this with your partner rather than, uh, could you have switched characters? Yeah, we could have. I mean, we can switch back to, you know, Reyes at any time we want you know so he's back here uh, looking at the body now if we'd actually gone through the opening of the game uh, rather than skipping it the two of them kind of stay together during the opening so they would have ended up in in town together um, but because I've kind of skipped over that stuff he's kind of left out here gotcha. but yeah I mean we could you know you can switch these characters at any time you want uh, and you, know, you could have done it all with him, or you could have done it, you know, with her. And there are some puzzles. There's a puzzle a little bit later on in the game where you need both of them working uh, together in concert to go ahead and solve the puzzle. So, but you really can play probably 90% of the game with, uh, you know, with either one of them. Okay. So you can kind of choose, you know, do you like playing with her? Do you like playing with him? And just really play the game. So we're talking to Natalie, the uh, reporter here. And uh, tell her we're investigating a murder. See if she knows anything. 
And uh, she's just what shared in the police scanners. Body found in the river. Going to send her best reporter out. <laughs> oh, it's it's got to be Clark Kent, yeah. <laughs> And, uh, you know, Natalie's a little bitter that she's stuck in such a small town because she's sure she would have a couple of <clears throat> Pulitzer Prizes by now if it wasn't for that. So uh, so we'll let her know that we're going to need a complete press blackout on this case. She's kind she enough to remember us. That. Yeah, not, not with the First Amendment. Of course, we're, now we're pretty sure it's the Fifth Amendment she's talking about. <laughs> so she's going to set us straight on that. It's like, well, how about the 12th Amendment? <laughs> so you can pretty much go through the entire Constitution with her. Nice. And she will uh, she will set you straight on which of the amendments are. So anyway, we're uh, we're just going to head on out of here. We're done talking to her. And that's, I mean, that's pretty much the game. Good first you know, just, look at just, it. Yeah, just yeah. I mean, a, a quick look on stuff. I mean, we've you know barely scratched the surface of you know what you need to do in the game, uh, you know, to go ahead and solve the murder. And you know, there's there's a, a more, you know kind of more of an underlying mystery that's going on that that goes just beyond you know what what the murder is that you'll discover. You know, as, as you're playing the game, and the whole thing kind of opens up to kind of a much deeper, uh, you know, much deeper thing going on. Uh, I'll head down here a little bit. There's a, oh, there's a giant guy uh, dressed as a pizza. So let's go talk to the giant slice of pizza. So the game is uh, coming for PC, correct? Any other platforms out of the gate? Yeah, it'll be on PC and it'll be on Mac Excellent. and it will be on Linux and uh, Xbox One. Ah, that's right. Of course, you were on stage at Gamescom. Right. How quickly I forget. Uh, that is excellent news. And uh, do we have, do you have a window as of yet for uh, when you aim to get it out? Uh, we're shooting for you know probably August or so. Excellent. So plenty. Uh, it's, it's oh, this kinda, is a, kinda this kinda a great early for. look then. This is a this is a fantastic early peak. Yeah, we're 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 quite a ways from being done uh, with the game right now. We're kind of going through this stage of of getting the town all working and. Uh, and just, we just started our first play testing where we're bringing people to play the game and uh, see how they, uh, you know, how they like it and problems they're having. What you're seeing right now is, you know, one of the first cut scenes in the game that happens with the sheriff uh, talking to some unknown strange person on the phone. Great. Well, Ron, very much appreciate this super early sneak peek at Thimbleweed Park. It is, if uh, if you're old like me, it is a return to the great glory days of point-and-click adventure gaming. And if you are young enough where you are uh, not familiar with point-and-click adventure games, it is going to be a breath of fresh air for you because it is just a, a light, it is a game that's about story and about its writing, and it's funny, and it's, uh, if at least if any, if this small indication, if small taste is any indication, we're going to be in for a treat. Ron, thank you so much. All right, thank you. For more on all things Thimbleweed Park from now up until its uh, August-ish release, keep it tuned right here to IGN. Thank <laughs> you.